Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashi Karen, and welcome back for another video. Today we're looking at Dutch Door ideas for your bullet journal, or more specifically, Dutch Door weeklies. I do have two previous videos on Dutch Doors, one that tells you how to make them and shows you the Dutch Door layouts that I've used previously in my journals, and another video with different ideas including monthlies, a future log, etc. As mentioned though, today our focus is on Dutch Door weeklies, and I'm going to be setting up all the weekly spreads that I'll be using for the month coming. On each of these weeklies, I'll have spaces designated for each day of the week, a meal log, water intake trackers, and space to track nine habits, as well as sections for my 101 things tasks, action steps for my goals, and a weekly reflection. That probably sounds like a lot, and it kinda is, but that's what's great about Dutch Doors. You can get a bunch of extra space in your layouts because of them. On this layout, I've gone for a vertical Dutch Door, so cutting off the right-hand edge of the central page. I've also left a little tab at the top, mainly for decoration, but if you have more pages as part of a Dutch Door layout, these can be really helpful for being able to turn to the correct page quickly. An example of this was from my April setup in my fifth bullet journal, where I had daily logs contained in Dutch Doors. I could have numbered the tabs on this to make it a bit easier for at a glance knowing which day was on which page, but this layout worked really well for me. You'll have seen that for this Dutch door I used a craft knife to cut the page. This is in no way necessary, you can just use scissors. A lot of the time I actually like to use a guillotine to cut my vertical Dutch doors, but given the tab on this one, I knew I'd be much less likely to cut a little too far if I used my craft knife and a ruler. In terms of the layout for this weekly, each day of the week has three boxes, so one for a meal log at the top, the larger box for tasks and events for the day, and then a water intake tracker at the bottom. The section on the right that's visible regardless of the position of the Dutch door is my weekly habit tracker with space for nine habits. At this stage, I haven't decided what those habits are going to be, but I know they're going to be different to the ones I'm tracking on my monthly habit tracker, which is going to be more for my goal-related habits. For this layout and all the layouts I have in this video, I also decorate the pages with that same hexagonal and line pattern that I had as part of my February setup. If you hadn't seen that one, there's a link to it and some other related videos in the description box below. Something in particular that I like about this layout is that you have all the workweek boxes on this opening page, and then the weekend behind the Dutch door. Behind there I also put a space for a running task list and my weekly reflection while the spaces for my 101 things and action steps were under those workweek boxes. Because I went over the tab so many times with my Tombow, I felt that the yellow was a bit too dark, so I stuck some washi tape over it on both sides. This also helps to strengthen the tab a bit, so it's just less likely to get damaged. Often with extra space comes extra time taken, so this layout took about 50 minutes to set up. Of course, that doesn't include ideas generation time or penciling in time, but it does also include decoration that some people would find unnecessary. First week down though, and on to the second. For this one, I'm going to be setting up a horizontal Dutch door. These ones always make me a little bit nervous, just because I don't really like cutting so close to the binding of my journal. But I also know that if I don't cut really close, the paper edge that gets left behind will bother me. I was actually quite lucky in the placement of this one, as the page for the Dutch door actually ended up being one of those pages that is stuck to the next one with glue. In notebooks like the Archer and Olive that I'm using, you have separate sections of paper that are stitched together, but you also have neighbouring sections held together with glue. This meant that when I cut the Dutch door out, I didn't have to be quite as worried about cutting too far and having another page in my notebook fall out. For cutting out this Dutch door though, I again used my craft knife, mainly because I could get quite close to the binding while still maintaining a neat cut. I find that a little bit difficult to do with scissors. Of course, if you are making a horizontal Dutch door for yourself, you can always cut a bit further out from the spine, just to be safe, and then stick any remaining paper down with washi tape. For the layout of this weekly, rather than having each day be a third of a page wide, I've instead gone for a half page wide. This gives me four days on one side of the Dutch door, and three on the other. Rather than having my meal logging with each day, I've got it in a separate section running down the right hand page, but my water intake trackers are still going to be with each individual day. 
The top section of the left hand page has a condensed tracker for the nine habits and the spaces for my weekly reflection, 101 things tasks and goal action steps. My running to-do list, which I like to include, is in half of the top section on the right page. As you might be able to tell, one of the ways that I like to change up my weekly layouts is just by moving the same elements around. A lot of the time I find that using the same layout week after week makes me feel a little bit bored and uninspired. So having these four layouts that I'm setting up, all with pretty much the same sections, just in different arrangements, is something that I'm really looking forward to using. This one took approximately 47 minutes to set up, and although I don't use horizontal Dutch doors all that often, I do think this one turned out really well. Another use for horizontal Dutch doors is when you want to have the same header for multiple spreads in a row, but only want to write it out once. This is what I did for my May productivity tracker in last year's bullet journal, so cutting the top section of the Dutch door off so that the full header could be seen regardless of which way that key page was facing. This was to fix the issue that I had for the month prior, where I couldn't see the full header for the layout because the top of the key blocked it. I also did a similar thing with vertical Dutch doors for my October monthly setup in my sixth bullet journal, just so that I could see the decorative side panels on each of my tracking and logging pages for the month without having to set them up multiple times over. Back to our third layout idea though, which is actually the fourth week of February. The reason we're doing this one before the third week of February is because the part I'm cutting off here is actually going to be used in that setup. For this layout, I've again gone with the boxes for each day being half a page wide, and I've put them all in the central most part of the setup, leaving the left and right side panels free for my habit tracker, action steps, 101 things, and reflection sections. I've also put the water intake tracker on the left hand side panel, and a space to record any tasks that need to be done for March on the right just as this layout is going to be the last week for February. The meal logging sections though, I put back into the boxes for each individual day, rather than having them combined into a separate section. Going through this video, you can probably tell that my personal preference is for vertical Dutch doors, just cause I find them to be a little bit easier to set up. But one of the types of Dutch door that I haven't highlighted in this video are the folded Dutch doors. The folded Dutch doors are great for people who are just starting to experiment with Dutch doors and might be a little nervous about taking scissors to their journal. When I first started bullet journaling, these were my favorite to use, in particular layouts like the one I have here. So having a section for events on the left, daily checklists on the Dutch door, and then something else on the right. Normally a timetable or a master to-do list. I also used folded Dutch doors for my entire setup in June of my fifth bullet journal, where I had each of my monthly trackers, logs, and daily checklists taking up half a page vertically. I could then fold these in various ways to be able to see different pieces of information against each other. Back to this layout though, in terms of timing, it took about 43 minutes to set this one up. Typically in my bullet journaling practice, I like to set up each weekly layout just a few days before the week that I intend to use it in. Obviously for the month coming, I'll already have all my weekly set up, so I am quite interested to see how this affects my practice. Normally I like to only set my weeklies up just a little bit before I use them, just so that if I've had any kind of revelations about the way that I like to plan, or if there's something in particular in that week that I want to try and make space for, or maybe even if there's just something new that I want to try out, then I can. That won't be the case for these weeklies, but wherever possible, I have tried to be mindful of what will actually be going on in that week, especially for our next layout idea. However, with school starting back next month, and with having a sizable chunk of my courses I'm teaching being new to me, I also feel that it might be nice not having to spend time during the week setting up for the week coming. But we'll have to wait and see how it goes. For this spread though, we're taking that vertical section, which was cut off from the last layout, and using it to make the Dutch door for this one. On that cutout, I'll have my events for the week on one side, and my meal log and water intake tracker on the other. I'll be attaching it to the middle of the left-hand page with washi tape, so that it opens out towards the left-hand edge of the spread. Another way of achieving this is to still use a middle page that you just fold in half, and then stick the inner half of that folded page to the left-hand page. Hopefully that makes sense, but an example of this is a weekly that I did previously, back in December of my sixth bullet journal. 
So folding the middle page and then sticking the inner half to the left hand page of the spread. In terms of this layout though, like I mentioned before, I did try and tailor these weeklies to what I would actually have going on at the time. So underneath the Dutch door, I'm putting a space for a packing list. This is going to be EOTC week at school, so I'll be heading off on school camp for a few days. On the left half of that left hand page, I have sections for my goal action steps, 101 things tasks, and those nine habits while the entire right-hand page has a space for a running task list and my weekly reflection. This type of layout will be better suited for that week, just as I know I won't need really large boxes for each day individually, especially for the ones I'm away, but I'll still need enough space to record everything I need to get done before and after that trip. To attach my tip-in Dutch door, you'll see that I put washi tape on both the front and the back. This was to make sure that it was nice and secure, regardless of which way the door was facing. As a side note, one of the benefits that my Team Progress Over Perfection patrons and up get are bi-monthly sizing guides for various weekly layout ideas. If that was something you're interested in, do make sure to check out my Patreon. And of course, if you weren't already, subscribe to my channel to make sure that you don't miss out on other layout ideas from me. This one took approximately 40 minutes to set up, but our question of the day, do you use Dutch door layouts in your journal? If so, do you prefer vertical or horizontal? And if you don't, how come? I obviously do, but not all the time, really only when I need it or particularly want it. For our final flip through though, we have the first week of February with a vertical Dutch door. The second weekly with a horizontal Dutch door. the third week of February with a tip-in Dutch door, and the fourth weekly, which is another vertical style. As I mentioned, I'm really looking forward to using these layouts. At this stage, I do have a suspicion as to which one's going to be my favorite to use, but I'd love to know which of these layouts was your favorite. As always, thank you for watching, team. If you liked today's video, please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more on planning, productivity, and personal development. Until next time, bye!